how to solve quadratic equations by factoring or using the factorization method. You need to know that a quadratic equation in its standard form is written as ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Where a is the coefficient of x squared and b is the coefficient of x, y c is the constant. This is to say that a quadratic equation of the form 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 that this value is a a is equal to 2 b is equal to 3 and 1 happens to be our constant c so having said that let's get to the rules and then solve some questions to solve a quadratic equation by factoring the first step is to identify the middle term the middle term in the sense i mean b and then you identify the product of a and c product simply means to multiply the a and c coefficients so let's go ahead and solve some questions then why we do that we take the next step and the other step until we solve the next question a quadratic equation in a standard form is a x squared plus b x plus c is equal to zero always remember that so having said that, so whenever there is no coefficient written alongside the x squared term, just know it is 1. The coefficient of x squared is 1. Therefore, right here, a is equal to 1, b is equal to 8, y c is equal to 15. So let's go ahead and solve this question. The first rule says that we should identify the b term, which is the middle term. Remember, this is the first, the second, and the third term, and the one middle in between them is this. So our b term is equal to 8, positive 8, there is no need to write plus. Then the next thing we want to identify is the product of a and c. So a multiplied by c, and a is 1, then b is 15. Their product, 1 times 15 is 15. So once you have done this, you've, you are set on the right path to solve this question. The next rule says, rule 2, find two numbers that multiply to the product of a and c and also add to b. So we are going to do that together. So we want to find two numbers that can multiply to the product of A and C and add up to B. So look at what we want to achieve right here. So for 8, we're looking for two values that can add up to give us 8. And we're looking for two values that can multiply to give us 15. Now look at the hack I used to find these two values. I use the value of the product of A and C. Then I look for its factors. Then when I find the factors, I combine them to solve for what i'm looking for this might be very very confusing but let's do that together you're going to see me do the whole process and then we'll solve together so i haven't said that at this very point what are the factors of 15 1 multiply by 15 gives you 15 you cannot divide 15 so use the next value which is 3 3 multiply by 5 gives you 15 once you've gotten to this point okay from the first point if you look at 1 and 15 1 and 15 if you check 1 plus 15 1 plus 15 gives you 16 that's not in any way close to 8 and even if you had said um, 15 minus 1 it gives you 14 so not in any way close to 8 now what I want you to figure out is that at this very point you can clearly see that 3 plus 5 gives you 8 and then 3 multiplied by 5 gives you 15 that makes sense with what we are looking for we are looking for two values that can add up to 8 and two values that can multiply to give us 15 so we are done and that two values is what 3 and 5 positive 3 and positive 5 so once you find that the two values what's the next step step 3 write the factors or substitute b with the two values although this is a longer approach let's go back to the question for this very question the coefficient of x squared is 1 whenever the coefficient of x squared is 1 it is ideal you simply write the factors but whenever the coefficient of x squared is above 1, which is 2, 3, 4, 5, you want to substitute for the middle term. And we are going to do that when we solve the next question that gives us that kind of scenario. But right here, we just need to factor since the coefficient of x squared is 1. So let's do that. What are the two values? The two values are 3 and 5. So having said that, you can say x plus 3 and x plus 5 equal to 0. So we factored this expression right now so after you factor the expression what's the next step the next step says solve for x so right now let's solve for x okay so we we'll have that x plus 3 is equal to 0 or x plus 5 is equal to 0 and this makes sense because every quadratic is meant to have 
two answers, except in some situations or scenario which we still come across. So having said that, at this very point, you can collect like terms by taking 3 to this other end, so that I can have x is equal to minus 3. Or we can as well see for this situation, let's say subtracting 5 from both sides because if you want to subtract to collect like terms, you have to do it on both sides of the equation. So x plus 5 minus 5 is equal to 0 minus 5. So the 5's cancel and then you have x equal to 0 minus 5 is still 17 as minus 5. So even if you have just moved this value to this side, crossing the equality sign changes to minus, so that gives you minus 5. And that still makes sense with what we have here. So therefore, x is equal to negative 3 or x is equal to negative 5. And that is our final answer. Okay, I know what you're thinking or what is going over your head right now. Just hang on, we'll solve the next question, and then you're going to see this whole process again. And that is going to be very, very helpful for you to understand this. I know this might be confusing at first, but over time, with consistent practice, you definitely understand it. It's not as difficult as you think right now. So let's go ahead and solve the next question. Okay, for the next question, we have x squared minus 7x is equal to negative 12. But then we have this equation not in alignment with the standard form because the standard form of a quadratic says ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero so let's arrange this expression for it to align with our standard form so here we can have x squared minus 7x then bringing 12 over to this end becomes plus 12 is equal to zero so i just collected like them or if you don't like this method you can use the other method which is by simply saying x squared minus 7x then add 12 to both sides plus 12 is equal to minus 12 plus 12 so here we have x squared minus 7x plus 12 is equal to 0 so if you use that method that is exactly what i have at this very point so let's go ahead and continue okay let's identify certain values so the value of b first what is our b our b is negative 7 that's the coefficient of x and then the product according to the rules i'm following the rules right now so the first rule is identify b which is your middle term and our middle term from here is negative seven then the next rule says identify the product of a and c so the product of a and c that's a multiplied by c is equal to the coefficient of a here is one because we just have x squared as you know we'll have another value right there you understand maybe two or three would have used two but since it's just s squared you know the coefficient is one so one multiplied by positive 12 and that gives us 12 so we've been able to do the first step which is identifying our b term and the product of a and c so we've done that what the next thing we're looking at for now two values that you can add up to give you negative 7 and then multiply them to give you positive 12 and to do that use the simple hack which i told you about and what is that simple hack? Product of b and c, which is 12, is equal to, start from the least number, so 1 multiplied by 12. So remember, our target is to get two numbers that will add up to negative 7. And then when you multiply them, you have positive 12. So that's our target. So let's do that. So at this very point, 1 multiplied by 12. If you add them up, it's 13, subtract is 11, not close to 7 in any way. So the next number is 2. So we are going to use the numbers, that's the factors of 12, numbers that can divide 12 to keep, you know, plugging in. So right here, we can say 2 times 6 is 12, yes? Now, but if we say 2 plus 6, 2 plus 6 is 8, and 6 minus 2 is 4, not 67. So you're looking for that two values that you can either add or subtract to give you the b term when you multiply them they'll give you the the product of c and a so let's go for the next value so 3 multiplied by 4 gives you 12 right yeah so but then if you can add them up you can see that these two values can actually give you what you're looking for because 3 plus 4 is 7 now we have two values now so let's work with these two values so we have 3 plus now the reason why i stopped at this very point is simple these two values can add up to give me seven so there is no need writing out all the factors there is no need whenever you find what can give you your answer then there is no need going forward so you can see that three plus four is giving me seven but then this is a positive seven i want a negative seven so the positive seven is not helpful so what i simply do is that i'm going to, to work on the signs when you work on the signs hopefully it gives you the right one so let's go Right here, we can have minus 3, minus 4. Since, this, since they have both signs, we have to add. So this is 7 and minus, exactly, so minus 7. So let's check minus 3 multiplied by minus 4. Minus times minus is plus. I'm just writing, but I don't need to write plus. 
then 3 times 4 is 12. Does that make sense? So this aligns to what we are looking for. So this works, this works, but this does not work. So the two values are negative 3 and negative 4. The two values. So okay, let me just put it down here. Okay, the values, okay, negative 3 and negative 4. This helps you maybe when you are solving to remember. Okay, at this very point, we can see that the values we are looking for is negative 3 and negative 4. So let's factor. We can have that x minus 3 and then x minus 4 is equal to 0. So let's solve for x at this point, the last part of the rule. So x minus 3 is equal to 0 or x minus 4 is equal to 0. So from this very point, we can collect like things, moving 3 to this other end. So we can have x is equal to 3 and that's the value of x. Or we can add 4 to both sides to make x and the So x minus 4 plus 4 is equal to 0 plus 4. So this cancels out and x is equal to just 4. So this is the same thing as moving this value to this other end. So that's what, that's what I just did. So therefore, x is equal to x is equal to 3 or 4. So the answer, you usually have two values for quadratic except in some rare cases. So I haven't said that. I believe this was very helpful. So let's just do one more question and we are done. So, so for this question now, we have 3x squared minus 2x plus 8 is equal to 0. And it makes sense because it's in the standard form of ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. So if not minus my a, it looks like 9, but it's fine. So the first step is to identify our b. b is minus 2 here, yeah. And then the next thing is to identify the product of a and c. So the product of a and c, a times c, a here is 3 and c is minus 8. So that has negative 24. So once you've done this, you've done the first step, identifying your b and the product of a and c. So after that, let's go ahead and look out for the factors of the products that can add up. To give us negative 2 and negative 24. So we want to, what we want to achieve is we are looking for two values that can add up to give us negative 2 and then also two values that when we multiply will give us negative 24. To do that we work with 24. So 24 is equal to 1 multiplied by 24. If you add them up or subtract them they will never give you negative 2. So let's go for the next value. 2 multiplied by 12 2 plus 12 is for not close to 2 in any way. So let's check the next value. I think 3 can work, right? 3 times 8. 3 times 8 gives you 24. Add them together, 11. Subtract 5. Must be close to 2 or negative 2. The next value is 6. Let's go. We're going in an order. 1, 2, 3, 4 can divide. So 4 multiplied by 6. Now let's check. 4 plus 6 is 10. But 6 minus 4 is so, so that looks like it's going to be very helpful for us. So we have 4 and 6. These are the two values that look promising. But let's let's go. 4 plus 6 obviously is 10. That doesn't work. It's not what we're looking for. Then let's say minus 4 plus 6, which is also another way of saying 6 minus 4. Minus 4 plus 6 is 2. That doesn't work. We're not looking for positive 2. We're looking for a negative 2. So but then let's say... 4 minus 6 that's negative 2 and that makes sense let's also check 4 multiplied by minus 6 we we'll have a positive sign here and a negative sign plus times negative is negative and then 4 times 6 is 24 also makes sense so all you need to do is identify the two values then when you have those two values you can work on the signs until it gives you the right thing you are looking for this can be one of the most challenging part but once you get the help of this very part then everything about factorizing quadratics become very easy for you. You need to know those two values. Then you need to know how to work with the signs until they align to the values you are looking for. So the two values I got are 4 and negative 6. So I have positive 4 and negative 6. So for this method, let's go back to the rule. Let me show you something. So from this rule, it says, or substitute B with the two values, although this is a longer approach. Now this longer approach is ideal when the coefficient of x squared is above 1. Unlike the previous questions we saw, the coefficient of x squared, they were just 1. So here, for this last question, the coefficient of x squared is 3. So we have to use this other approach. So let's do that together. Substituting the middle term, the middle term is negative 2. So we'll have 3x squared, 
the two values are plus 4, in this part we have to add x. So we are going to include x because we are going to factor. Then we cannot have this minus 2 again. It goes then minus 6x minus 8 is equal to 0. No, now let me explain or let me recap what I just said. The first term here, 3x squared, we got it from this very part of the equation. And the last term, negative 8, we got it here. But this is what we substituted. So we had to change this middle term in place of the two values, which are 4 and 6. But because we want to factor, I had to include x. So at this very point, let's, let's factor here or let's factorize. So from this very point, we can have x bracket 3x plus 4. So at this point, you can see that 3 x times 3x gives you 3x squared again. Then plus x times 4 still gives you 4x. It doesn't change anything. So at this very point, what is common? So what I simply did was I looked at for what is common between 3x squared and 4x. And that is just x. So for this very point, what is common between negative 6x and negative 8? So negative is common, obviously, amongst them then 2 can also divide the both of them because what is common among values simply means you can also divide them so 2 is also common i have 2 in brackets you'll be left with 3x plus 4 and if you check 2 times 3x gives you 6x remember the negative so negative 2 times 3x gives you negative 6x and negative times positive gives you back negative that's another thing you can know and then 2 times 4 gives you 8. So what I'm trying to say is that whatever value you have should be able to give you back what you had here initially. So whatever value you're having here should give you back what you had in the previous one. So if you can look at this, you see that this point, at this very point, that you have same value here and then same value here. Since they are exactly the same, we can just take one of them. So you can have in bracket 3x plus 4. And that one is enough. Then combining this and this, you have x minus 2 is equal to 0 so i should have added equal to 0 here so at this very point you can now solve for value of x 3x plus 4 is equal to 0 or x minus 2 is equal to 0 so at this very point let's collect like terms moving 4 to this end becomes 3x is equal to negative 4 and then since we have a coefficient we have to divide both sides by 3 to remove the coefficient so 3x divided by 3 is equal to negative 4 over 3 Cancel out the 3 is an x is equal to negative 4 over 3, and that's our final answer. So, here we've got like times again moving this to this end, or we can just add 2 to both sides. So, adding 2 to both sides becomes 0 plus 2. This goes and x is equal to just 2. So, at this very point, you can see that our x have two values, and that is exactly what we are looking for. So, having said that, we've come to the end of this lesson. Thank you so much for following. You might need to go through this lesson again and take notes for you to understand. But I believe with personal practice, maybe we can join our WhatsApp community where we will solve a whole lot of questions together. With personal practice, you definitely understand this.